Hi again guys and welcome to another specific car review in the world of Gran Turismo Sport. Again, one of the new cars in the latest DLC update, the 1.11 patch, and on this occasion we of course released a tune setup, specifically a straight line speed build for both drag and top speed racing, before doing the review, and that's something which we don't usually do, so we shook it up a bit there, and that tune just went to show how fast this car can be. In fact, it can get off the line almost as quickly in some cases as an all-wheel drive car, even some all-wheel drive cars with a whole lot more power. Now that's not surprising to anyone who's used the Ford GT before in the franchise, because of course it's a fast car, and my realisation of just how competitive this new Ford GT could be actually came about on the first time in Gran Turismo 4. Because back on that game, one of my favourite pastimes used to be picking a track and then selecting the entire category's worth of vehicles within a certain vehicle type, be it SUVs, super saloons, sports cars, or in this case, supercars, and then taking all of them in their stock form around that certain track to see which one would be the best. And of course, loads of people like to do that on Gran Turismo. There are whole forums dedicated to that kind of thing. But the thing which really surprised me is that even back then, knowing less than I do now about certain vehicles, it really surprised me that more often than not, even when I would change the circuit, in their stock form at least, the Ford GT would often be the fastest of them all, even faster at that time, because of course there were no Ferraris on the game, there were no Lambos, there was a lot less than we have now. But at the same time, this Ford would often be quicker than the likes of the Pagani Zonda and a variety of others as well. That really surprised me, given how much less power the Ford GT has, which of course at that time I didn't know as much, for instance, how big power does not always equal, of course, big performance, but it's understandable why people assume that. Now, the Ford GT has carried over that essence of being one of the strongest all-round supercars in the game, but also especially in a straight line. It has this knack of being far faster in a straight line than its raw spec would suggest. Being the spiritual successor, of course, to the GT40, of course it's going to be quick. That goes without saying. But how quick can be a shocker. And it's not just in games, because in the real world as well, the Ford GT is one of the most popular choices of supercar to tune up for absolute speed. There are even companies not just Hennessy, but companies way beyond what Hennessy do, who literally take vehicles like the Ford GT and tune them up to hit speeds of like 285 miles per hour over a standing mile. Incredible speed. Cars so fast that they have to have parachutes. Full-on dragster style. That's awesome, and it shows the potential which the Ford has. And even with 550 horsepower, which by today's standards, which... We're not that many years on, it's like a decade, which in the world of cars isn't all that much. But because tech and performance is accelerating so much more quickly, exponentially almost, 550 horsepower doesn't seem like all that much anymore for a supercar. Now that's more like super sports car territory, something like a Jag F-Type would have that kind of power, whereas when this car came out around 2004-2005, that was pretty good. That was still behind many of its rivals, but it was good, nonetheless, about 50 horsepower less than something like an SLR, or a Carrera GT, or a Zonda. In fact, pretty close to the Zonda C12s of the time, the C12S in particular. Now, the Ford is a car which is endowed with a great advantage that many other supercars don't have, especially ones like Pagani, where they basically come out of nowhere, they have no hereditary line, really, that they're inspired by, they just come from an amalgam of different ideas that the car creator has. For instance, the Zonda was inspired by the Sauber C11, Le Mans car. But it wasn't a new version of that car, it was just inspired by it. Whereas the Ford GT is very literally the modern interpretation of a GT40. And when you take a car that was so good at what it was intended for, as the GT40 was, one of the most iconic race cars of all time, for good reason, and then translate it to today with better tech, but also a true appreciation of just the raw, simple approach that the GT40 has, especially by today's standards, almost like the supercar equivalent of a muscle car in some ways, then that gives you a 
great basis to work from, and the Ford GT does just that. Now, I hadn't realised before this new update just how many of you guys really do love the Ford GT. I knew there was a lot of love for it, but I didn't realise how many people loved it. It's pretty cool to see. I've never liked the GT as much as the GT40, to be honest, but I do have a lot of love for it. It's a very nice car. In particular, I like the GTX1 concept, the open-top version. Kind of a shame that they never built that one, but in a similar way to the GT40, the open-top one wasn't really to be, because they did, of course, also make an open-top prototype of that as well. But, in terms of its Gran Turismo Sport updates, what can you expect from the car? Because on Gran Turismo 6, you're looking at 940 horsepower. In the drag tune setup video, I already covered the fact that it's got like 100 horsepower less. So has it been neutered to some degree? Or, like the McLaren F1, does it benefit from these updates aesthetically, visually, sound-wise, interior? Well, I would say both, <laughs> in a funny kind of way, because it definitely has been neutered, but so have a lot of other cars. So at least if you're going to neuter something, make it across the board. And thankfully that is what Gran Turismo Sport has done so far, at least for the most part. Because of course you still get OP vehicles like the Beetle or the Porsche 911, but generally less of the cars are OP than they used to be, for instance on Gran Turismo 6, and the disparity between cars that should be far more similar is no way near as drastic now. Just think back to how bad the TVR Speed 12 was for top-end speed, for no apparent reason apart from, oh, we've decided it has a flat floor now. It had one before, and yet it, <laughs> it suddenly dropped by like 40 miles per hour. If that car was on GT Sport, for instance, it could still be competitive. Likewise, a car like this can now take on something like a McLaren F1 under, in some ways, a different kind of playing field. Not necessarily a completely level one, but the power class system, rather than a PP system, allows you to actually bring supercars much more closer to each other in terms of racing regulations, if you want to look at it that way within the game. Now, as far as how the car itself performs, the handling is definitely very similar to what it already was. It hasn't been improved, I would say, as much as the McLaren has. However, it's still a lot of fun to drive. I know some people were a little disappointed with how it sounds. It's not quite as raw as you might want it to. The supercharger isn't, for instance, quite as loud as you might want it to be. But at the same time, it's definitely upgraded but not necessarily quite as much as I think super fans of it might want, and you could say deserve, because if I was a super fan of the car, I would want it to be louder, and to be able to hear that supercharger much more, and to have more of a raw experience. So overall, I would say that this car has definitely improved in some ways, but in other ways, not so much, because stuff like the McLaren F1 is more relevant now because of GT Sport, because it was never as quick as it should be on GT6 anyway. Whereas the Ford, you do feel the drop in power, in performance, and also in just how dominant it can be on that game. It doesn't feel that dominant anymore, and look at that as good or bad, but for some people, you might find that a little bit disappointing, but I would definitely say if you are a Ford GT fan, it's a nice vehicle to have back with its updated glory, and apart from the car sound, it's a nice package to work with. But that's it for this pick overall. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.